The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All hit radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome back to the X One, everyone. I am Rob McConnell, and we're coming to you after 28 years, still from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. If you'd like to uh, send me an email, it's very simple: X One at X One Radio TV dot com on all social media sites: X One Radio TV. And to find out about the programming we have available for you on the X One Broadcast Network: www.xzbn.net. dot net. And we're being brought to you around the world tonight by the Exxon Broadcast Network, Talkstar Radio Network, Mutual Broadcast Network, and iHeartRadio. And starting the middle of June, I believe the date is June 15th, we are going to be on not only Simul TV TV, but on the all-new, brand-new Simul Radio Broadcast Network. So that is great, and we are looking forward to spending a lot more time with our good friend Stephen Turner, who is the president and CEO with uh, Simul TV, and this is all because of you, the members of the Exxon Nation, after all these years and how we have grown. And you know, one of the best parts about this job is meeting people that we've had on the show years ago and, and to hear how they've grown over the years. And such is the case of my guest this hour, a young gentleman I had the pleasure of having on the show years ago. His name is Philip Smith. And he's an artist with paintings in numerous museums, including the Whitney Museum of American Art, the Detroit Institute of Art, Boston Fine Museum, I'm sorry, Boston Museum of Fine Arts, and Dallas Museum of Arts, as well as he is the author of a fascinating book, Walking Through Walls. Joining me now is Philip Smith. And Philip, welcome back to the Exxon. As I told you before we went on air, great having you back again. And I am so happy to hear when guests who we've had on the show before their lives flourish, and uh, congratulations on all that that you've accomplished over the years. Thank you, Rob. I'm delighted to be back with you and and looking forward to our conversation. Uh, Why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself, who didn't have the opportunity of hearing you the last time you were with us? Sure. I I lead sort of two lives that come together in a funny way. Um, I was a journalist for for much of my life. I I was managing editor of GQ, Mm -hmm. uh, I think, when I was 25 years old. Wow. Uh, I've written several books, one of which is a book on my father. But I've always been an artist, and uh, I've shown pretty much in Germany, Japan, throughout the U.S., Europe. So it's uh, it's an interesting life. Where did your interest in the paranormal or psychic phenomenon come from? Well, uh, my father was a really unusual guy. He, um, um, let, let's go back to the 60s. There were no Barnes & Noble. There was no radio show such as yours. Um, anything that had to do with, with psychic phenomena, ESP, was, was scary to people. Yeah. They thought it was the work of the devil or, or communists or whatever. But my father um, had always been really interested in, in the occult, um, in the unseen, and he studied. I mean, he would, he would get books from England. He'd order books. They'd come by sea passage. They would take three, four months to wow. get here on whether it's the pyramids or reincarnation. And these were topics you just couldn't buy books on. Um, he was very interested in, in homeopathic medicine, um, very curious about all sorts of ways that are now becoming really mainstream and accepted. But 50 years ago, uh, he was... I hate to use this word, but he was sort of a freaky guy. And 
The name of your book, Walking Through Walls, how did that title come about? Well, it's interesting. When, when I was, um, I guess, about 14, um, my father had already started. This is, the, let's see, the date, about 63, 64, mm -hmm. so a long time ago. My father had started on his journey. Um, he was actively studying yoga. He had become a macrobiotic. He was very interested in seances, in psychic phenomena, and especially healing. And uh, one night I, I went out to a party. Uh, I came home. I was 14 years old at the time. I forgot my keys. I knocked on the door, knocked on the door, knocked on the door, and um, uh, no answer. Uh, the, lights were, the lights were off in the house. Um, porch lights were on. And a little bit later, this, this, the door opens really slowly, and this guy comes out. I swear he looked like Lurch, and he just looked at me. And it's, I'm thinking, who, who are you? Where's my father? And he said, your father's in, in, a, in a trance right now. He's communicating with people on the seventh plane. And he says, I don't know why you bothered to, to, to even knock. He said, you're your father's son. Haven't you learned to walk through walls yet? And when I was writing the book, that, that story just kept running through my head, that imagine a 14-year-old I mean, today you'd say, oh, that's cool. Yeah, I want to try and walk through walls. But back then it was, it was very intimidating. And that's where the, the title came from. How did your father's journey change his life as he became a psychic healer? Oh, boy. Uh, in, in every way possible that you would never imagine. Um, my father at the time was a, uh, you'd call him a high society interior designer. He mm -hmm. worked for... Um, Walt Disney and uh, General Motors and, and the president of Cuba, the president of Haiti. Um, he did a lot of resorts in the Caribbean, uh, Palm Beach. So he was, you know, hanging out with, with really sort of ritzy people yep. and drove a nice car and had nice suits. And um, little by little, he just started, you know, pulling away from, from all of this, from, from this materialism. And really, he knew there was something else. He was very interested, and he, he wanted to find a way. He, he knew that being alive and being on Earth meant, meant something more, and, and this life was a gift, and, and he wanted to use every minute of that gift to do something important. And um, he became fascinated by Edgar Cayce. He read a lot about Edgar Cayce, and in fact, um, in the 70s, Edgar's son, Hugh Lynn Casey, became very good friends with my father, and he'd come down and stay with my father during the winter. But my father was very interested in the idea of how, how do you get information from invisible sources, and how do you heal people without, without medicine, without surgery? Right. And um, so his path at the time was, was he had no... He had no role models at the time, and, and people thought he was nuts, and he just believed in this unseen world, and, and he eventually got there and, and discovered it and made it work for him. How did this affect your life? Hmm. Um, again, in every way possible, uh, both good and bad. Um, you know, my father would get arrested uh, sometimes for practicing medicine without a license, even though he he never touched anybody, he never gave really any medicine to anybody. Um, <clears throat> but but they were so afraid of him, the authorities, the doctors, the FDA. Um, and I would watch this as a kid, so I was terrified to tell people, oh, my father, my father you know, some woman came over the other night with breast cancer and he healed her. I, I couldn't say that to anybody. So I sort of lived this, this dual life. Um, I pretended I was sort of a normal kid and my, my, my home was just like anybody else's, sort of Ozzy and Harriet. Mm -hmm. And um, I just learned to be very, very quiet about what went, what went on in our, in our house and I just didn't talk about it. Um, and it was only until actually writing this book many, many years later that people, I thought, oh, it's safe to talk about this now. Um, so I was just terrified. Um, and also I thought my father was nuts in many ways. Um, but 
as time went on, I began to really respect what he was doing because no one else was doing this at the time, and it was just remarkable. He was saving these lives when medicine at the time was, was pretty primitive. I mean, um, if they thought there was a, a shadow on an X-ray and they thought maybe you had cancer, um, there were no CAT scans, there were no MRIs, they would just cut you open and start poking around and do what they called exploratory surgery. There were no cholesterol medications. There was no bypass at the time. So my father would basically get these people that the doctors had, had sent home to die, and I would mm. see them. They'd come to our house. Our house was kind of like Lourdes in a way, um, and they would, they would be healed, mostly overall healed remarkably. So I, I had to sort of change my own thinking and start to respect this and become interested in and obviously the person I am today is, is because of him. Philip, you and I have to take a commercial break. Please stand by. Great talking sure. to you again, and uh, congratulations on all these years. Still getting the message uh, that is so important to so many people in your book called Walking Through Walls. The website is www.walkingthroughwallsthebook.com, I believe. And Philip and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break as we continue here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't forget, you can always uh, check out what's happening on the X-Zone broadcast network simply by going to www.xzbn.net. My name is Rob McConnell. I'll be back on the other side of this break. Don't you dare go away. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the x Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on TV. Plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like X Zone, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. We live in rapidly shifting times of extreme volatility and uncertainty. Such profound change brings a unique opportunity for the evolution of consciousness. I'm Gwilda Wiecka, host of Mission Evolution Radio Show, a program that explores the latest scientific developments and deepening spiritual truths supporting human evolution. Join me on xzbn.net, where I interview leading experts in science, physics, medicine, spirituality, and more. By applying divergent viewpoints to leading-edge topics, we uncover expansive and evolutionary truth to assist you on your path to enlightenment. More information and past episodes are available at missionevolution.org. Thank you. 
Explanation. Philip Smith is our special guest this hour. He is the author of Walking Through Walls, a memoir by Philip Smith. His website is www.walkingthroughwallsthebook.com. You were saying that your house was basically or could be described as kind of a Lord's where people came at all hours of the day and night for healing. What were some of the healings that you saw? I, I believe you did mention something about cancer before we went to the break, but could you tell us anything else that that you saw? Um, pretty much everything. Um, there were people who would come with physical deformities, mm-hmm. like uh, one leg was, was shorter than the other, yeah. and they would walk with sort of a, a gait uh, and a limp, and he uh, would, would take their, their legs in, in his hands while they were sitting down, and he would stretch them out, and he would put his thumbs right on their ankle. So you could actually, so the person could see that where his thumbs lined up with their ankle, that it was uneven, and they were not in alignment. And he would talk to uh, his spirit physicians and ask that the legs be adjusted, and he would just sit there and hold them. And you would watch um, the legs sort of um, move into place and and line up. Um, I actually have this on um, several tape recordings where he was doing this in front of an audience. Um, uh, or, you know, a group of people, Mm -hmm. um, I would see people come with, with, with leukemia. There was, there was, and a lot of this uh, information in the book comes from either him taping his healings or, or letters from people. And he would bring, they would bring babies to him that, um, were either deaf or, or blind and they had taken them to the hospital and the doctors couldn't do anything. And he would, would, would heal these babies. Um, I'm not saying that every person got healed. I, sure. I want to be very clear about this. There were, there were people who couldn't be healed or didn't want to be healed, or their karma was such that they had to experience this particular illness. But for, for someone, um, I think he had a better success rate than most doctors at the time. Where do you think your dad was receiving this information from? Was it the same source that Edgar Casey was using? Um, I, I don't know, but he, my, my father had very specific uh, spirit personalities that mm-hmm. worked with him, and um, he he sort of, it's almost like he went to a correspondence um, or distant learning medical school, because these different uh, spirits would identify themselves. One had been, a, you know, a surgeon, one had been, uh, you know, a, a different kind of doctor, an eye doctor. This guy, Dr. Hahn, was an eye doctor. And what they would do is they would talk to my father, and he would write down their, their instructions. I mean, they would teach him medicine. They would teach him anatomy. They would, they would uh, tell him, someone is coming to you today that has kidney problems, and here's how you need to heal them, because the kidney problem did not start in the physical kidney. It's in the etheric body, and you need to work on the etheric body, which is sort of the magnetic body outside our physical body. And, and that's where the illness is, and you'll never heal them unless you work there. So he worked with these people. Um, the other thing that he, he did was um, he, one of his main tools was a, a very simple pendulum, and he would be able to sit down, whether the person was sitting next to him in the room or they were, they were off in, in uh, you know, South America somewhere. My goodness. And he would, able to, he would diagnose them very clearly um, by using different charts and holding the pendulum, and he would come up with these diagnoses with, within several minutes, which, again, there weren't machines back then, but even if there were MRIs and CAT scans, mm-hmm. you know, just making the appointment and going through the machine and waiting for the radiologist to read the report... Um, <laughs> is several hours, if not several days. Why do you think the medical community and, and others didn't, you know, didn't grab your father and, and, and try to learn what he had so that the others could, the other members of the medical community could have the same success rate as your dad did? Yeah. Uh, again, it's it's very hard from where we sit today mm-hmm. in 2018 to to think about 1963. Um, back then, do- doctors had a very different um, 
sort of aura about them. They were considered gods, and there was a kind of arrogance that they were they they knew everything and you know better living through through science and medicine and chemistry. Um, and as far as they were concerned, he he was a witch doctor. But what they didn't realize, and and what we're realizing now is medicine in many ways, um, not in all ways, but in many ways has hit a wall. Yeah. The antibiotics aren't working anymore. Um, the, the microbes are drug resistant. Um, you know, 250,000 people a year die from medical errors. That's more than died in the Vietnam War. That's more than die in terrorism. That's, a, that's every year. That's a, a, an enormous a loss but, of people. But, you know, just to try and balance the scales here, how many have the medical community saved? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, no, no. And I'm sorry if I was misinterpreting that. I agree. Yeah. Um, there are so many people that, that are alive today thanks to the medical community and through the, the surgery or medications mm-hmm. or anything that they, that they do. I think to answer your original question is that um, uh, I, I think, as I said, they, they saw him as a witch doctor and yeah. they just, it was just not in their training. And when you go through that intense training, even today, you know, I'll talk to doctors about, about nutrients or vitamins mm-hmm. or uh, any other ways to sort of help uh, if, I'm, if I'm going with a patient to the doctor, and they just wave me off. And I think their, their, um, their training is so focused. Um, but now my father, when I talk to my father, he tells me that it's really important that I sit down and write about what he did because he said, look, there, this is another tool in their toolkit. That's all I ever wanted to, to tell the doctors is I'm not telling them to throw out everything they learned or telling what, what they do is wrong or bad, but here's another tool. And, you know, there's false positives in blood tests. There's false positives sure. from MRIs, or MRIs can't be read because there might be calcification in the way. So this is just another tool. That's, that's the only way he saw it. But I think that, that, that the scope of what doctors can and cannot do is broadening now. And, I, I, you know, what's, what's amazing to me is when I'm on these radio shows, the amount of emails I get from doctors who are curious and, and do want to learn. It's, it's just the times are different. When did your dad pass? Uh, 1981. And when was the first time you had a communication with your dad after he passed? Um, it, took, it took some time. Um, well, I had, I had communications with, through dreams mm-hmm. that were very clearly... Um, right after he died, I went to India, and um, I had gone to see the Taj Mahal that night. I was a guest of the Indian government, and it was a, it was a private viewing of the Taj at full moon. It was an amazing experience. And um, I went to bed last, that night, and um, it, I got a dream, and it was a phone call from my father. And he called, and he said, I just want to let you know I'm okay. And, and he hung up. And what I've learned um, through various mediums is that when you have these very short, very intense, very clear dreams about someone who's passed, those are actual communications because most of our dreams are are very movie-like and they sort of go on for a while and they ramble. But when they're short and sweet and boom, it's almost like the lights are all on in the room. That's actually direct communication. But it, it took a while. Um, I mean, I was, I was sort of grieving his death for 10 years. And then um, it started to happen where, where he would come through. And I also was very fortunate. I met an amazing medium called Patricia Michelle. And she would have, uh, we would talk on the phone, and she would have these conversations with my father like you and I are talking. And um, she taught me to take... Uh, dictation from him to sit down at night and and let him come through so we we sort of chat all the time and then every once in a while uh i i i work through her and and sort of get caught up with him are you following in your father's footsteps right now are you healing others yourself um boy does he want me to (laughs) every time i talk to patricia he says you know Mm -hmm. You're my son. You have my DNA. I taught you everything. You need to be doing this more. Um, I'm also an artist, and I feel that through my paintings that I, that I help people. And yeah. The paintings have a very strong energy for people, and people live with them. And, um, but I think that as I get older, that 
there every once in a while i will i will help somebody but it's it's an enormous um responsibility that i'm i'm just not um i'm just not ready at the moment to take because you know you you do a radio show and you talk about this and and you'll get 2500 3000 emails of people who are really ill wanting help and even if i did this full time i i I couldn't even begin to help all those people. It's it's sort of overwhelming. And so that's why my father went, and I, I'm doing it, but slowly, and I need to do it more. He wants me to write this book so that others will be able to do what, what he did. And he wants me to teach people. He says, especially doctors. Mm-hmm. Doctors in your world need this information so that... Um, yeah, God forbid there's a power outage and they can't, they, you know, someone's having a stroke and they don't know what's going on. They need to be able to use a pendulum in case they need to be able to diagnose someone. It's just, it's another tool. So um, I think I will follow in his footsteps in, in a different way. All right, stand by, Philip. You and I have to take our news break at the bottom of the hour. Exonation, Philip. Smith is my very special guest. His website is www.walkingthroughwallsthebook.com. He's the author of Walking Through Walls, a memoir by Philip Smith. And uh, Philip and I will be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. Broadcast studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, to the world and beyond. You're watching the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. AVS Media Day. You have heard of the Exxon? Now watch it on Simul TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like X Zone, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world, interactive online network, and much more. Tomorrow's TV today, Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the x Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnick's author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the Word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God. It was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God, and finally, After the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, 
the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Philip, where is your father now um, when you communicate with him? You know, he wants you to to take over from him here. Where is he then? From what, what I've been told uh, uh-huh. through Patricia uh, when we communicate, he's, he's on the 11th plane uh, because I guess there's different planes of consciousness um, after you pass on. And uh-huh. he... Um, I asked him if he if he's planning on coming back. He said no. He says he has too much work where he is, and uh, I think he's he's developing new healing methods. And um, you know, just like Thomas Edison, you you wonder where he got these ideas for moving pictures and and record players and everything else that he invented. He's he's working on advanced healing that is is sort of making its way through the cosmos back back to us. Why doesn't your dad communicate with you directly? Why do you have to go through a medium? Oh, he does. Okay. He does. I mean, we, we, I talk to him every night, and what I do is I sit down. What Patricia taught me is just sit down at the computer, empty my mind because I'm a fast typist, and right. I just let him talk. And, and I close my eyes and just type for 15, 20 minutes. And what comes through are these... Um, <laughs> perfectly articulated sentences that that I know I would struggle to to write and he will teach me things or or talk about things that are going on in my life but it's a um, and then a lot of times he'll he'll implant thoughts in my in my mind but it's a very different experience I guess it's it's the difference between watching a, a, a movie at home on your TV and then going to an IMAX uh, theater with, with 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 Patricia it's sort of in it's like in 3D and surround sound. It's 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 a very intense experience, and she's very gifted in a way that I'm not. How, how explain to me how her experience with you is like IMAX 3D surround sound compared to you having a one-on-one with your dad. What does she do that you can't? You know, part of it is, you know. It, let me let me use this analogy. You know, okay. sometimes people are sick and sick and they don't know what's going on. They go to the doctor and the doctor says they can't find anything wrong with you and they come home and they're suddenly better. Right. Um, I think it's that level of objectivity that, you know, listen, we all have self-doubt and sometimes I think, uh, I'll go back and I'll read the messages and I'm thinking, come on, you know, you must have made that up. Even though my mind is pretty blank when, I, when I'm typing all this stuff. Mm-hmm. But here you have someone actually I've never met. This is someone I talked to on the phone, and she's she's we're just having this conversation with my father. She's just relaying these, and it's it's a very it's more conversant in a way. Um, my uh, my conversations with my father are uh, they're. I'm not physically uh, hearing them. I'm mentally hearing them. So okay. it's, it's just a very different. Ex- it's a it's a more enriched experience that that adds to certain things. So would would you say it it gives validation to the way you perceive things or the way that you receive them? Absolutely. And one of the things that that um, you know you asked how my life has changed. Yes. Um, I always believed in everything my father did and everything he taught me, but experiencing it is very different. And I think through working with someone objectively, because like I said, I don't, I don't really know this person. I've never met them. And, and hearing all this information that is, that is uh, pretty, pretty intimate information uh, is, is very validating. And what that's done is it's just enriched my experience so that, it's not like I believe this stuff. I, I now know this stuff. This is my reality that, that life does not end when, when the body stops. And it's, I'll just add a, one quick anecdote. Um, my father, in his spirit dictation, 
asked one of the spirits, um, Arthur Ford, and he said, you know, what is it like, what is it like being dead? And, and Arthur said, remember those old detective movies where, where they would have a room where it was a two-way mirror mm -hmm. and the detective is, is interviewing the, the, the criminal and, the, and the, the lieutenant is outside and looking in through the one-way mirror? He says, that's what it's like for us. We're, we're on the other side of this one-way mirror where we see you, we hear you, but you can't see or hear us. But we're right there. We're right next to you. And my experience through, through working with Patricia is exactly that, that, that they are everywhere. And, and my mother, um, when she passed away, um, and she wanted to talk to me, she was really aggressive. She would just turn all the lights on in my apartment in, in, in the middle of the night. Um, and it just kept happening. And there was, I had an electrician come in and, and say, there, there must be a flaw here or something, and they, they couldn't find anything. And so she was letting me know, listen, this is, I'm right here. Or my watch would disappear, and I would have company over in the living room, and there'd, there'd be 20, 30 people in my living room. So if the watch was in the living room we, on the floor, we would have stepped on it. The next morning, that watch is smack dab on the floor in the middle of the living room. And she had, you know, she's very playful. So she would, you know, hide the watch. I couldn't find it for a couple of days. And there it is in the living room, uh, and no one stepped on it. So um, it, it, all the, the communication is different with different people. Truly fascinating. I understand that your father uh, could also talk to the dead. Tell us about that. Yeah, and part of it was through the spirit dictation, but also he would have, um, he had the gift, like this medium I work with, Patricia, that Michelle, that um, he would just start uh, talking out loud. I mean, we would be at dinner, mm -hmm. And um, he, had, he had a system set up, and actually on the website, there's a little drawing that he did of, of his face, and there are these little points uh, all over his face, and each one of those points has, has a name, like the tip of his ear or the tip of his nose, under his right eye, under his left eye, and each one of those was, was a signaling point from, from one of his spirit doctors. So if they wanted to, if Dr. Han, the eye doctor, wanted to talk to him, he would touch him maybe on his left ear. Um, or when Chandrasen wanted to talk to him, he'd tap him in the middle of his forehead. And my father actually does that to me as well. Um, after, after working with Patricia, and she really opened me up, um, I noticed that, uh, especially in the winter, I, I would have this sort of tickling of, of my right ear, and I kept thinking it was mosquitoes, but I was, I was in New York in the middle of a snowstorm, and there's no mosquitoes at the time, and I kept flicking it away, flicking it away, and finally it just, it, it, it hit me. I said, Pop, is that you? And, and uh, it was like, yes, I want to talk to you, and so that, that opened me up more. Um. Do you consider yourself to be a medium now as well? No, I no because um, someone someone like this this medium mm -hmm. she can she can uh, it, I've I've sent I don't know a hundred people to her and um, really strange uh, stories come out of it and she's able to really open that door and lock into those people and, and find those people. Um, what I do experience is when I'm with someone, and it's usually better if I don't know them right. at all, and I've just met them for the first time, um, and we're both surprised by this, stuff just starts coming out of my mouth, and I'm talking to them, um, and I don't even, I'm not even thinking or knowing what I'm saying, and I'm, I'm telling them something really important, whether it's, it's what career they need to be in, or that there's a problem at home, and it, it doesn't happen all the time, but it just... It just happens, and um, but I'm not. I don't think I'm getting that from dead people. I think I'm just getting that from some aura around them or some energy information around them, rather than directly communicating with with like their dead father. Why do you think your father was was given this amazing ability? It's a very interesting question, Rob. It's a really interesting question. Um, you know, there's a couple things. One is that in, in the, I haven't had time to talk about this guy, Arthur Ford, but Arthur was a very famous medium mm -hmm. um, when he was alive. And then when he died, he really started uh, talking to my father. He would blink the lights 
uh, three times. We'd be in a restaurant or we'd be at the movies and all of a sudden you'd just, we'd be on the highway and all of a sudden the, the street lights would, would blink and my father would say, Arthur's here and he would start writing things down. But, but Arthur told my father that he had had many lives and um, um, he was um, in, he was an amulet maker, a talisman um, in Persia and he was very interested in, in making these these metallic um, medallions that that could energize people's psychic centers. So he was aware of that. And then I found a diary from my father in 1921. Um, I think he was around 20 at the time, and he was recording his dreams, very bizarre dreams. And in one of the entries, um, he said, "I had a dream about children in the desert, and there was a train, and there was fire, and they were screaming." And then you turn the page in the diary, and the next day he says, woke up, he was living in New York at the time, and he said, headline of the Daily Post or the Daily News um, was that there was a train crash in the Nevada desert and 13 children had been killed. So he was, at the age of 20, he was already sensing information from somewhere else, and he knew it was important enough that he was actually writing it down and keeping a record um, because he, he just... Uh, he knew that there was something there, and why he was given this, I don't know, but I think he was, he was one of those people that was given a gift so that he could really help people. And by the way, he never charged for healing. He, he did all this for free. He, you know, I, I opened the, the segment talking about how he was a decorator, and, yes. and, you know, and all of a sudden we went from living a sort of jet-set fancy life to, to kind of being at the poverty level because uh-huh. he just... He let it all go, and Phil, he couldn't take money from people. Philip, stand by, my friend. You and I have to take our final break. When we come back, we're going to wrap this story up with our special guest this hour, Philip Smith. And Philip is the author of Walking Through Walls, a memoir. And we'll be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away. You have heard of the X Zone? Now watch it on Simo TV plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like Exxon, Sci-Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built-in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. The new nonfiction book, Razor of Madness, is similar to cult movies like Clockwork Orange, Dragon's Tattoo, or The Other Side of Hell. Wayne Morin Jr. and Thomas Lee Howe will expose widespread and systematic deficiencies in this thought-provoking tell-all novel. Mind control rages among scholars in law schools. Human rights are ignored while thought reform and mental manipulation are accepted practices used as behavior modification. Dr. Louis Jolion West comes to mind. Media and public scrutiny shows that United States mental hospitals are in fact destructive murder industries. Razor of Madness Exposé Novel details this epidemic through an in-depth professional and personal investigation. For decades there has been a revolving door policy that still releases killers and pedophiles back into society. The maestro of mind control continues to haunt America to this very day. Razor of Madness is available in paperback or as a downloadable ebook at Amazon.com. The concept of a new age has been around since the late 19th century, yet much of its original meaning has been lost. What exactly is the new age? Is it a religion, a collection of obscure esoteric practices, a series of doomsday predictions, or an astrological event? The New Age Chronicles is a unique, complementary publication bringing reason and grounded information to separate fact from fiction. 
chock full of valuable information to support you as we make the monumental shift into the new era. You won't want to miss a single innovative issue. The New Age Chronicles newspaper is coming soon to www.newagechronicles.com. Philip Smith is my special guest this hour, Exxon Nation. He's the author of Walking Through Walls, a memoir by Philip Smith. His website is www.walkingthroughwallsthebook.com. Where did the title Walking Through Walls come from, Philip? Well, that was um, that, was that funny story where, where, where I was a kid and I came home and one of my father's friends said, Had, haven't you learned to walk through walls yet? He was surrounded by... You know, he, he was such an unusual guy. This mm-hmm. is Miami in the 60s. And he was surrounded by people who were, you know, who, who were curious about this, but, but they didn't have any knowledge. And so it was, you know, there were astrologers and yoga teachers and, um, you know, health, they would call them health food nuts back then. And these people were around him constantly. It was sometimes a little bit too much like a circus. But but um, they were very interested in what my father was doing. So he had um, he continued to to pursue these things. And and I would you know walking through walls is something that ghosts do or people with absolute supernatural um, abilities to do. And and it, it, that's what my life was like at the time as a kid. It was just it was like a ghost story. It was like. Watching, you know, there was a show back then called Bewitched. Oh my gosh! Sure. Um, it, it it just it felt like that. That I was in. Uh, on one hand, it was totally comedic mm-hmm. because it was so crazy, and on the other hand, it was very profound. And I, I think the book captures that feeling because people write to me and tell me that they're laughing. It's um, because it was. Uh, it's all through the viewpoint of a 14 year old kid who says, "What the heck's going on here? I want a normal life. You know, I want a father who sells insurance. I don't want some psychic killer father." So um, it 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 was a, a a bit of a crazy time, and and that's where the title comes from. Have you ever walked through walls? No. What is your opinion <laughs> as as someone who lived this very interesting, this very Oh my, I wish my life would have been uh, as, well, I had a good life, please don't take me wrong, but, you know, I could have used a little bit more spice in life, I'm sure we all can, <laughs> but what was it, what was it like, you know, uh, when you look back and say, my gosh, yeah. what was strange back then is, is normal today. And and thank goodness, I mean, on one hand, I, I just look around and, and um, I, I mean, we couldn't get organic food back then. Yeah. There was no people didn't even know what the word organic meant, and here it is just everywhere. And I'm just thinking, wow, the world has really caught up and changed. Um, it was, you know, it was strange because in many ways my father was taken over um, by by, the, by this this ability of his. He he, he was. He was on this this path that that almost like he was caught in this this jet stream that that wouldn't let him go, and so um, my mother and I were sort of watching all this, and it was it was sometimes hard to 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 break in there or to communicate with him because it was just it was so out there at the time. I mean, you know. It's three o'clock in the morning, and someone's banging on your door, crying that their husband's had a heart attack, and they have the husband in the car. And it's like you can't have a normal life like that. And he takes out his pendulum, and he's he's talking to these people about about energy or karma, and they're just kind of looking at him, thinking, "What what are you saying to us?" So it was. It took a long time for me to to grapple with it mm-hmm. and to. Um, as my father said, in many ways, I raised myself because I, I had to, I had to sort of figure it all out. 
And now I'm, uh, yes, you know, there are times I say to myself and I say to him, I'd like a do-over. I, I, I'd like to, <laughs> knowing what I know now and who I am now, I'd like to go back and let's, let's start the machine again. And let's go back to the beginning of the videotape yeah. because now I get it. Um, I just didn't get it back then. But maybe you weren't meant to get it back then. Maybe your time is now using the experiences that you were blessed to have had with your dad, the communication that you're having with your dad now. Maybe this is what it all led up to, my friend. You know, I just got goosebumps. I still have goosebumps with you said that because I think that you're, um, that's a very profound statement. I think that you're very sensitive and very perceptive, and I think you're absolutely right. And I think that's, I mean, my father's been hammering on me that this, this is your next step. Yeah. And I'm, um, it's, 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 a, it's a big leap for me, but he, I, I think it is the next step. And I think it, it's, it's different. And um, I don't think that, I think he, he had his way and he did what he did. But I think there's more information out there now and people are more receptive. They're not, they're not going to call the cops or the FDA right. on, on me like they did my father. So, yes, I think it's a very different time, and I think that, that – thank you for that. I, that, that, that. That's very meaningful to me. Well, it came from the heart because after having had the opportunity of talking to you years ago, talking to you now, and, and seeing the progression in you, the next step, you know – it, it, for for me, f looking from the outside in is very is very natural. But you said you know that that leap of faith. You have something that not very many people would have in your situation, my friend. You have someone who's going to catch you. Well, that that's very true, and he's he's told me that repeatedly, mm -hmm. and he he's just always there um, for whatever I need or want, and he he when when. You know, when, when, we, when he first came up with this idea of me writing this book, um, uh, I'll do this very quickly, but when, when I finished writing the, the Walking Through Walls 10 years ago, right. um, I, was, I had gone through what I thought I had gone through all his papers, and I was aware of everything because I, I wanted everything to be really well documented. I didn't want anyone come to me and say, your father was a fake, you made this up. I, I did everything based on his, his papers and his audio tapes. And all of a sudden I found a box I, I, I had sent the manuscript in, and I found a box I, had, I, just for, I didn't know about. I, I didn't open it. And in it were all these, these charts, I mean, sort of cryptic, circles and diagrams and, and triangles, and I had never seen them before. And there was a note in there from him, and, and he said, do not show this to anybody because these are very powerful, and if they get into the wrong hands, it could be very serious. So uh, flash forward to, to him talking to me in the last couple years, and I, he said, you know, you have all my papers, you have my charts, and you need to bring, you, you, need, you need to publish this stuff. I said, but Pop, you know, there's this note, and um, you, you told me not to share this with anybody because they're very powerful and very, they could fall into the wrong hands. And he said, you know, I know now that, not that he was wrong, but he says, I know more now. And he says, people's own karma, if, if they try and do something harmful with this information, will come back and it will be taken care of. You don't have, that's not your job. You don't have to worry about that. So, yes, it is a different time now. Where can people get copies of your book, Philip? Um, that's, that's a great question. I mean, fortunately, uh, we, we've been just continually selling out the books and, and Amazon was actually out of them. They're back on Amazon, actually, as of today, Excellent. but I think there's a, like a week delay, but Amazon's the best place. What are your final thoughts for the listening audience of the X-Zone tonight? You know, what, what I'd love every, and it's so hard, we live in a world with mortgages and credit cards and, and someone cutting us off when we're driving on the mm -hmm. highway, and... But we're magical beings. We're, we're, we're this miraculous being in a, in a miraculous world. And if we can just look at the world with that mindset, what a miracle this world is and how plants grow and, 
and how fortunate we are to actually be alive. And we're always, we're always chasing more and more and more. We don't have enough money. We don't have enough time. Yeah. You know, our boss yelled at us. And, and yeah, all that exists. But if, if we can get centered and stay focused and really stay in the miracle that we are, mm -hmm. I think not only will each one of us change, but we'll change each other. And it will, will you know, all this, this uh, the horror that we see in the world, I think that all of us can change it. And it, it's got to, it's got to start with each and every one of us. It's not going to come from someone else. I agree with you 150%. If you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. And we're, constantly being inundated with negativity and oh. I, I used to watch a certain uh, news channel all the time we used to have them here in the offices uh, called cnn which is crummy news uh, network now in my books <laughs> and the inundation of negativity mm. whether it's on facebook whether it's on twitter whether it's on any of the social media radio television my goodness people yep have got to, in my opinion, stop and smell the roses. Look at the wonder and the beauty around you. And once we get back to who we really are, mm -hmm. I think that this is when the change will start. And I believe in my heart of hearts that by you bringing this book to the world, you're doing a great service and helping a lot of people to make this change start. Well, you're very kind for saying that, and, and I do believe that, and, and the emails I get from people, that it, it, it seems to awaken things in yeah. them, and it, it does make them want to change and live a different life, and, and we, we have to. We just have to. Um, we're, we're, we're all at stake. The planet's at stake. If, if, if humanity doesn't sort of, you know, ratchet it up at this point right. and get out of the, the pig pen, we, we have to. Philip? Our time has come. I want to thank you once again for joining us, and I look forward to the next time we meet back here thank in the Exxon. Take care of yourself, my friend. Exxon Nation, our Rob, guest thanks this for everything. Oh, it's my great pleasure. Our guest this hour has been Philip Smith, and uh, he's the author of a very heart touching, positive, um, great book. It's entitled. Walking Through Walls, a memoir by Philip Smith, and the website is walkingthroughwallsthebook.com. I'll be back. Don't go away. Modern Esoteric, Beyond Our Senses by Brad Olson, consummates the lifeology story about where humanity originates. It is the lost continents, the primitive wisdom, the mythos of creation, and the rethinking of ancient history as we are taught in academia. There is much more to the story than what we have been told. As this is the first book in the Esoteric series, Modern Esoteric starts at the beginning of time and accelerates up to this modern age. Future Esoteric is book two in the series and takes a forward-looking position ahead of today with an open and honest examination of the ET issue and various unexplained phenomena. To discover the writings of author Brad Olson, visit www.bradolson.com. That's www.bradolson.com. Are you or is someone you know struggling with addictions, depression, anxiety, relationships, low self-esteem, lack of confidence, grief, success, and prosperity? Do you know that your subconscious belief plays a big role in the outcome of your hard work? We can help you permanently change the beliefs that may be the reason for your struggles and failures. We care about getting you the return on your investment and the results you are looking for. We can help you be free of the limitations of your past and in realizing your highest potential. We work with people by phone and Skype. For more information, visit us at www.ritasoman.com. That's www.ritasoman.com. Do you think you have energy problems in your home? Do you feel better when you're away than when you're home? 
Joey Korn is a global leader in the world of dowsing who specializes in personal energy clearing and space clearing. He can help you create an ideal energy environment in your home no matter where you live in the world. Learn about his remote spiritual house cleaning services and much more at www.dowsers.com. You can get Joey's book, Dowsing, A Path to Enlightenment, as well as other dowsing books and tools, Kabbalah books, and Walter Russell books. Joey's work is really amazing. Go to dowsers.com right now. That's D-O-W-S-E-R-S dot com or call 1-877-DOWSING. That's 1-877-369-7464.